This book is called The Feynman Lectures on Physics, and this is volume one. It was written by Richard Feynman, who won the Nobel Prize. So I thought I would make this video because a lot of people have been asking about physics books, and this one is super famous. Also, this one is free. That's right, you can get this one for free, or you can actually buy the physical copy too, um, like I did. I will leave links in the description of this video in case you um, want to look at the free versions or you want to uh, buy the physical copies. I definitely prefer the physical copies. Yeah, this is, this is an epic book. This book is sophisticated, so I would say it's not like the best book for beginners. Um, even Feynman recognizes that. You know, his feeling was that many students might need to use like a standard book on physics before being able to grasp this. And so after knowing some physics, you know, jumping into Feynman's treatment, which is just legendary, um, is a good idea. Let's look at the copyright. This book is really old. Copyright 1963, printed in the United States of America. This is the second printing from July 1964. And here's Feynman's preface. These are the lectures in physics that I gave last year and the year before to the freshman and sophomore classes at Caltech. The lectures are, of course, not verbatim. They have been edited, sometimes extensively, and sometimes less so. The lectures form only part of the complete course. So let me just emphasize that, again, this is a three-volume set. So volume two covers electromagnetism and matter, and volume three covers quantum mechanics. So what does this one cover? Let's just take a look at the contents. And so you can see what it's got, right? This is a nice, it's a big book. It's, it's really like wide. Let me just back up. See, it's just a very, I mean, my hand is not huge, but it's much bigger than my hand, right? I mean, that, that's a, this is a really big book, um, which is why I like it. Okay, I'm gonna give you a close look at the contents in case you wanna see exactly what this book covers. But basically it's mostly mechanics, radiation, and heat for the most part conservation of energy, time and distance, probability, the theory of gravitation. So it's got all kinds of physics. Again, um, it's, it's a great book, it's, it's fantastic, but I think that you know, it helps if you know even just some physics before jumping into this, but you could do it, right? Again, the book is targeted for freshmen, right? So um, if you think that you have the ability of a strong freshman, right, entering Caltech in the early 60s, then this book is for you, right? So um, then you can handle it. Because again, Feynman's opinion is that that's who really will benefit the most uh, from this book. Let me just give you another look here at these contents. There's so much in terms of content. I mean, just tons of information, right? I mean, ridiculous. Wow, wow, 52 chapters. I wanna emphasize all 52 are in this volume. A lot of times uh, when you look at a table of contents in a book uh, like this one where it's completely insane, I mean, look at all of these topics, right? There's just so much here. And I mean, look at that, just so much physics, it's insane. You think, oh, maybe this is the contents that's found in the other volumes. No, no, no. This is all in this volume. And again, volume two is mostly electromagnetism and matter, and volume three is quantum mechanics. So yeah, let's take a look at some of the stuff in this textbook. Let's take a look here at 12, which is characteristics of force. I wanna read this to you because I feel that you're gonna get a good sense of what the book is like and how it reads and why it's so great. So what is a force? It says, although it is interesting and worthwhile to study the physical laws, simply because they help us to understand and to use nature, one ought to stop every once in a while and think, what do they really mean? The meaning of any statement is a subject that has interested and troubled philosophers from time immemorial. And the meaning of physical laws is even more interesting because it is, it is generally believed that these laws represent some kind of real knowledge. The meaning of knowledge is a deep problem in philosophy and it is always important to ask, what does it mean? Now here he goes into a little bit of physics. Let us ask, what is the meaning of the physical laws of Newton? Which you write as F equals ma. So that's one you've seen before, right? F is the force, 
m is the mass, and then a here is the acceleration. And here he says, what is the meaning of force, mass, and acceleration? Well, we can intuitively sense the meaning of mass, and we can define acceleration if we know the meaning of position in time. We shall not discuss those meanings, but we shall concentrate on the new concept of force. The answer is equally simple. If a body is accelerating, then there is a force on it. Awesome, right? That is what Newton's laws say, so that the most precise and beautiful definition of force manageable might simply be to say that force is the mass of an object times the acceleration. Yeah, so there you get an idea of, you know, just a little piece of the book, and it just makes you want to keep reading, and honestly, I was reading it, so I want to keep reading, but uh, I don't want to bore you by reading the entire book. This is a great book, and I think it's perfect for anyone who really wants to, like, understand physics and get a perspective from someone like Feynman. I want to say something else about Feynman, too, because I've noticed this about him, and I never met Feynman or anything, but I've seen him in YouTube videos, and I've seen a lot of his YouTube videos. And when you listen to him talk, he's a really interesting guy. Um, it's just really, really interesting. And, and even the book has that interesting tone. I, I don't know. It's just a legendary textbook. I'm going to show you something really interesting. Look at this. So this is 2.4, right? Nuclei and particles. I'm going to turn the page. Okay. It ends. Then we go to 3, right? So if we go to 3, let's just keep going. Let's go through all of 3. So let me show you something. Let's see if you see what I see. So here's 3.9. Turn the page. It ends. So what, what just happened there? Well, what happened is that we have no exercises, right? So all you get are literally his lecture notes, and there's an index, right? There's an index. We should, we, we should look at the index because it's there, right? So it's interesting that this book was so famous and is so good that Feynman was able to write it and not put any exercise in it, exercises in it, and, and people still love the book. So, yeah, it's got a good index. But there are no exercises uh, in this book. That's another reason that this is really not, um, you know, the best book for beginners. But if you're a physics major or a, a person who is, you know, genuinely interested in physics and, like, you're looking for, like, a really good physics book to read, um, you know, this, this one is really good. Um, the explanations in this book, as you saw, we read a little bit about force, are excellent. You know, very, very good stuff. This is really cool. There is a fact, or if you wish, a law governing all natural phenomena that are known to date. There is no known exception to this law. It is exact so far as we know. The law is called the conservation of energy. It states that there is a certain quantity, which we call energy, that does not change in the manifold changes which nature undergoes. That is a most abstract idea because it is a mathematical principle. It says that there is a numerical quantity which does not change when something happens. It is not a description of a mechanism or anything concrete. It is just a strange fact that we can calculate some number, and when we finish watching nature go through her tricks and calculate the number again, it is the same. Boom, right? I mean, if that doesn't give you goosebumps, what an incredible book. And you can see there is actual math in the book. You know, you see here there's some you know, integrals. Now, I don't own volume two or uh, volume three. Not yet, anyways. We'll look at some trig functions. But I do know that they have like, you know, like box sets where you can get all three at once, or you can probably find them individually. And check this out. The Crab Nebula as seen in all colors. Cool. So again, this is a very sophisticated book. It doesn't have exercises. So there are no answers to the exercises because there are no exercises at all. It's literally just his lectures, but they're very, very good as you saw. Um, great for anyone who just wants to learn some actual physics, but you know, you still need to know how to do a lot of problems in order to do like really well in a physics class. So if you're taking physics and you're trying to get better like in your class, I mean, this is still gonna help you quite a bit. It's gonna, definitely gonna give you a deeper understanding, but the big, the big con to this one is no exercises, but otherwise legendary. And again, it's incredible that like this book became so famous and it's so well known despite the fact it has no exercises. I think that's a testament to how awesome this book is. But yeah, until next time, good luck, take care.